Hi, so this is episode three and a half or four, I don't even know, whenever I get it edited and uploaded, that's what it'll be. But basically, I wanted to talk about how to set up a Oracle VM VirtualBox virtual machine. Now, I do have access to VMware Workstation, which is a great program, but not everybody does. So VMware VirtualBox is what I've been doing the Ubuntu training in. You can see this VM right here that I have the stats open for is the VM that I've been working in and showing you guys. But right now, I'm going to show you how to set up a new one. So I'm going to switch over into Chrome and go to ubuntu.com. Take a second to load. And this is from this website. You can download the desktop version of Ubuntu, which is what we're using. You just click Get Ubuntu Now, follow some prompts. You probably want 64-bit. Hit Download, or you can go to Alternate Downloads and Torrents. Just download it from here. It's pretty easy. Basically, you need to get an ISO image and know where that's saved. So then, download Oracle VM VirtualBox. Just Google VirtualBox. You'll be able to get it. It's completely free. Don't let anyone make you pay for it because it's completely free. So once you've got VirtualBox installed, click New and name an operating system. Well, let's call this Ubuntu Test. And it's Linux, Ubuntu, it detected that from the name, so that's kind of nice. If you don't name it that, you just go in here, Linux, then Ubuntu, and hit Next. So what we have to do here is pick, uh, select how much RAM we want to have. Um, generally, you want to select significantly less than your total system memory. Doing your total system memory will probably make the VM or your computer unstable, which is not fun. So set it to about 4. I gave the Ubuntu training image 4 gigs, as you can see right here, 4096, that's 4 gigabytes. Hit next. You definitely select create a virtual hard drive now. Hit create. VDI is the best performing. You can use another one if you need to move it around later, but I would I would choose VDI. Hit next. Uh, dynamically allocated should be fine. And you can choose how large you want it. You need, it says 8 gigs is recommended, but actually you need at least 32 gigs. That's what I'm using on the other machine, and that's what you should use, because without that, you'll have no room to install programs, and it will probably run in reduced graphics mode, which is incredibly annoying. So while you can move the slider around, it is logarithmic and rather annoying to do, so just type in 32.00 GB and hit Enter. I believe I did 30.0, but whatever. So right-click on it, click Settings, go to Storage, and under controller, uh, controller IDE, click on where it says empty. This is your CD drive. And you're going to click this little icon here that's choose a virtual CD DVD disk. So what we're going to do is choose a file. And I'm in my downloads here. And I'm going to pick Ubuntu 14.04 desktop, AMD64, which means it's 64 bits. Now we're going to hit OK. And as soon as we've done that, press Start. I would just wait a moment while the machine starts up. There we go. This is the quote-unquote BIOS of the machine. And the Ubuntu installer will start. So don't worry if you have some odd errors here. That's normal because Ubuntu isn't uh, designed to run in a VM. So I'm going to maximize this, but the uh, screen will not actually maximize. So here you go. We want to install Ubuntu. Click on Install. Install the third-party software. It's just helpful. And just go through the installer. It's quite easy. We want to erase and install Ubuntu, etc., etc. So generally, you should probably pick Encrypt My Home folder just to make it a little more secure. Uh, but if you don't want to deal with that, you can just hit Login Automatically. So I'm going to do this and Encrypt, Continue.
So eventually the installation will come up with this message. Installation is complete. You need to restart the computer. So what you need to do is go up here to Devices, CD slash DVD Devices, and uncheck Ubuntu 14.04 Desktop and D64.ISO. Force Unmount. Then click Restart Now. The installer will crash. That's perfectly fine. Then go to Machine, Reset, and hit Reset. So what this does is, because the Ubuntu installer doesn't work properly with VirtualBox, it just forces it to shut down and make sure it won't boot back to the installer, but rather to the actual OS. So there's one more thing we need to do, which is to install... This will take a second to, to go. Just wait. Don't press either S or M. Just wait. Type your password. And you're going to need to run a terminal by pressing Control shift t or rather Control alt t to bring up a terminal right here. And once you have the terminal open, you need to type sudo apt-get install virtualbox guest dkms and then hit enter and type in your password. It's not going to ask me because I already executed something with sudo. Then hit y. Remember, you're going to have to type in your password. And hit enter. Then wait a bit. This will install. After you reboot your machine, you will have the correct screen size, etc., etc. This should help you in setting up your own VM to work along with my instruction series.